Growing up in public school, one of the most dreaded days of the school year was always the day that we had to do our standardized achievement testing. And today I want to talk about how and why we now do standardized achievement testing every single year in our homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Erin. I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids ages six to 14. We have always homeschooled which means we have always done standardized testing. And this is because we live in a state that requires standardized achievement testing every single year once our children turn eight years old. Now there is a lot of freedom within homeschooling and there are a lot of states that don't require you to do standardized testing. So I have always felt that it's very important for us to be teaching our children at the level that they're at on the pace that they are naturally progressing on and not trying to force them into things too early, too soon, too quickly, those kind of things. That is the freedom and the beauty of homeschooling is being able to really customize our children's education to where they're at and what they specifically need. And so I have never been really big on keeping up with grade level standards, have honestly never looked at what children should be learning at each particular grade and tried to keep up with all that kind of stuff. That honestly, like I start to squirm. <laughs> it almost gives me hives just thinking about the pressure of trying to do that. I think that all of those standards are completely arbitrary and there have actually been teachers and things that have talked about how they're arbitrary. So that is something that is not important to me. I am much more concerned with my children just making progression each year and starting where we are at and being able to continue working forward and learning and growing and learning to be okay with the pace that they are naturally on. Not to say that we let them be lazy and not do things, but I have learned to be very okay with not pushing things when they aren't ready for them. All of that being said, I have found that it is valuable as a homeschool parent to be able to see where my child lies each year within each of these categories that are tested on the standardized testing. I like to do it more from the sense of not necessarily comparing them to where everyone else is at, but so that I can see their progression each year. And then when I get those reports back, I can see the areas that in all reality really just confirm what I already know to be true about what my children's strengths are and the areas where they need a little bit more effort. I have found it helpful to have those records and be able to compare them year to year and see my children's progression in certain subjects where we have maybe spent a lot of effort to really see that their scores have bumped up from the previous year or that kind of thing. It is nice to see that presented in, um, in a way that helps me to then be able to formulate a plan for the upcoming year to know the areas that I need to emphasize within our homeschool. It is nice to have that kind of tangible thing that we can hold on to and then put into our records for each school year. I do feel like this can be a beneficial thing, particularly for parents who are just starting out homeschooling. Maybe their kids have already been in part of the public school or private school setting and they're more concerned about if they are doing enough as a homeschool parent to make sure their kids are where they should be at. I feel like doing these standardized testing can provide you that um, ammunition or the uh, reassurance, so to speak, that you are doing enough because you can see that ranking of where they lie within the range of kids that have done this test over the years. Or if you have family members or friends that maybe aren't supportive of you homeschooling and think that maybe you aren't capable or something like that, when you can present, you don't even have to present like you don't have to answer to anyone, but for your mental clarity, peace of mind, those kind of things, it can be helpful to have this to then just confirm for yourself that yes, you are doing enough. And if you really feel the need to, you can show other people 
the results to show that yes, your children are sufficient in all of these categories. So I do feel like that can be a tremendous benefit. There are a number of different ways that you can do these standardized testings. We have always chosen to go through a company called Family Learning Organization. I will link them in the description below if you wanna check them out for yourself. Um, they have a variety of different tests that you can choose from. We have always done the Terra Nova second edition test Test, which covers a variety of subjects. I'm going to read so I don't <laughs> forget some, but it covers reading and language arts, mathematics, science, social studies, word analysis, spelling, vocabulary, language mechanics, and math computation. And I have always liked this one because it covers that complete variety and not just the language arts and math component. I do like to see that our kids are, um, able to know and understand things that other kids about their ages have already learned about. And then it also gives me an idea of things if we haven't covered particular subjects that are um, approached in that test, then I can consider if I want to um, incorporate some of that in future lessons in our homeschool. So I do kind of like to see all of the things that are covered in that test. And so with Family Learning Organization, the way it works is that you um, order your tests online through their website, you select the test date when you're gonna do them, and then they mail you the actual hard copies of the tests about a week ahead of what you select for your um, deadline. And then you have two weeks to administer themselves in your home, just like your kids would do if you remember doing your standardized testing where you sit in a room, the teacher reads you your instruction, and then they set a timer and you go to work and it has to be quiet in the room, you can't help them you still do it all in that manner so that you are um, administering the test in a way that everyone else who takes the test is doing without the help involved in that kind of stuff. And then when the timer's up, they have to put their pencil down and move on to the next test. When you get these tests, you have two weeks to complete them and then mail their worksheets. They have the little fill in the bubble things. Um, you mail all of the materials back to Family Learning Organization and then they have a certified person go through and grade the results and they email you or mail you back the results with all of the rankings with, you know, to show you the percentile and the stay nine and the scores and all of the things that they got for each of those um, certain categories of the testing. I personally choose this route and really like this way because I like to have the freedom to do this within our home so that it is a no pressure, no stress environment. The kids can be comfortable at the kitchen table or you know at a little sofa table or something in the living room and just have that quiet dedicated time where they are working on this, but it's without that pressure of being in this group setting and working at it all day. We generally will space it out over two or three days and do a couple of the tests and then take a break as we need to, and then pick back up when we're ready to do another one. So it doesn't have to all be done in one day like it would be done if you were going to a facility that administers the testing, which is another way that a lot of people do choose to do um, their testing each year and that's fine as well. There are also online options that you can do if you are looking for different ways to do testing. Family Learning Organization does have one that's online now that they offer. We haven't done that particular one through them. We've always done the mail-in ones, um, but there are other online testing available. I'm sure you can find them with a quick Google search. I would say make sure that you check within your particular state as far as what your requirements are. Some states don't require this at all. Um, some states, I don't even know, maybe some states require you to submit your testing. Our state doesn't. It's solely for our records. It's just something we're required to do. And I do, again, feel like that is a valuable resource and a tool for us to use as a homeschool parent to have that peace of mind and reassurance that yes, we are actually doing enough <laughs> in our homeschool, because I know that's a big like question and concern within a lot of our minds. And so this can offer that proof to us that we are. If you have any questions about how we do it or any of this kind of stuff, drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.